Okay, so this is the second part of the lecture. We kind of talked about the physiology of stress. This and this one, we're going to really talk about uh, even more in depth the uh, long-term impact of stress, especially severe stress when you're uh, younger or at some point in your life if you experience kind of that toxic sort of stress. And this is all kind of focused down on this study called the ACE study. ACE stands for Adverse Child Event Study. It was kind of about uh, the impact of adverse child events or toxic kind of events uh, when you're young on your future health outcomes. Um, personally, I never knew about the A study until I uh, started teaching, but I did know when I was practicing, uh, it took me long as practicing OT to kind of notice this kind of bizarre trend with my uh, patients. Um, they kept telling me these stories about these horrific things that had happened to them. And I thought, it was just kind of a coincidence at first. And I was like, what is it about me or this situation? And I keep getting these horrific stories from these, from these patients about uh, being abused as children, uh, members of their family getting murdered, uh, losing somebody to a war, uh, physically, emotionally abusive relationships. It just seemed to go hand in hand with the sickness that I was seeing. And the sickness that I was seeing was not mental health necessarily. It was physical health. Somebody that had a stroke, somebody that had fallen and broken their hip, um, somebody that had uh, heart attacks. They too had the horrific stories about their childhood. And I thought, this is just kind of weird. I never really saw the connection. Um, some of the stories uh, we've kind of talked about in cases, that you can see what I'm talking about. We talked about Stacy with functional. She has uh, the diabetes and she had the, the amputations. Her childhood was just awful. Uh, father died young and then she was abused by her stepfather, sexually abused. Arnold, he was uh, abandoned by his, he was Native American. He was abandoned by his Native parents and he was raised um, uh, by adoptive parents. So he had that trauma <clears throat> lead to alcohol abuse, uh, spinal cord injury. Um, and then Joe, we just talked about Joe last week. Uh, he's the, he's the, the guy that had uh, the morbid obesity that was kind of literally eating himself to death. And there was kind of a clue as to what, with him as well when he said that there was, uh, he had childhood, he was sexually abused as a child. So again, what does it have to do with him, you know, overeating and all these health problems? I didn't, I just knew there was a connection, couldn't really see the connection. It was just kind of a bizarre thing that I didn't really make connect the dots until I heard about this, this study that was done, this famous study. Um, and it kind of addressed these questions about trauma. Do people just kind of get over early trauma or does it kind of linger through their whole life? Uh, why do some people continue poor health habits even when they know it's detrimental to their health? Like Joe and other people, why do they keep smoking and drinking um, and eating so excessively and they know it's destroying their health. Why can they not stop that habit that seems to be uh, such an awful habit to their health? Why is it so hard for them to stop versus other people? Is there a relationship between early trauma and later health? Is there a relationship between early trauma and poor health habits? So this is what this study was kind of trying to tackle. I originally was kind of thinking about... Uh, uh, average people at a job, you know, they have all these wellness programs on the job. You've probably experienced some of them, and they're trying to get you to eat better, exercise more, stop smoking, stop drinking so much. And they're trying to figure out why it wasn't working, why some people would just not seem to stop these uh, awful habits. So they did this, came up with this study uh, around ACE scores. Again, ACEs are adverse childhood events. Tackling this, this hypothesis, what, what, if anything, is the relationship between adverse childhood events, health risk behaviors, and adult diseases in the following categories? Uh, child abuse, household dysfunction, all these broad things around household dysfunction, uh, violence, substances, imprisonment, mental illness, even if you're a single parent, uh, neglect, physical, emotional uh, neglect. So the study participants were actually quite affluent, middle class. Most of them were white. These were not uh, people from uh, lower socioeconomic you know, uh, categories in terms of poverty and that sort of thing. 80% um, white, most of the middle class, uh, half female, half male, uh, relatively young, meaning age was 57. 
two different waves. Where they had eight categories of abuse studied in the second time. Second wave, they had 10 categories of abuse. Um, neglect was added. And the N, which is the number of participants in a study, was over 17,000 people. And if you don't know from research, and you will know when you get into research, uh, the power of a study is driven mostly by the number of people that can, that can participate in a study. A few hundred, less than a hundred, is not nearly as powerful as if you have a study that's like over a thousand. To have 17,000 people in a study, you know, in control groups and all that, makes it extremely powerful, extremely truthful and uh, insightful as a study. What they found, well, these, these categories of ACE, I think you've taken the, the, the survey to get what I'm talking about. Did you, do you, if you have an ACE, you've had one child event, uh, maybe in trauma, a divorce, whatever it is, and as you do the survey, you get you total up how many ACE, how many adverse child events that you had, how many ACE scores, how many child events you had. Um, a third of the people that took this study, of these 17,000 out of zero, just a third, so like two thirds had one or more. Uh, one in six had, a, had four or more ACE scores. One in nine had five or more. There was a greater relation between ACE score and health risk behaviors and diseases. They could see this link between a scores in health, poor health. Those with four or more categories compared to those with none, they found a four to 12 increase in alcoholism, drug abuse, depression, suicide, two to four fold increase in smoking, poor health, multiple sex partner, partners, sexual transmitted diseases, 1.4 to 1.6 fold increase in inactivity and obesity. There's Joe, remember him. Um, number of categories directly related to heart disease, Cancer, chronic lung disease, even bone fractures. So like I was seeing people that have, have uh, broken their wrist and stuff. Like a middle-aged person and they fall and break their wrist. And they start telling me these horrific stories. It's like, what the heck? Well, what does breaking your wrist have to do with being abused as a child? But you can see here that there's a connection. Uh, liver disease, all these different categories. Um, results, they found a connection between high A scores and psychiatric disorders, for sure. You'll see this. At a mental health institute, if you work there, you'll see this right off the bat. Uh, uh, high list of depression, suicide attempts, hallucinations, amnesia, and uh, childhood trauma abuse. Health risk behaviors, health risk, health risk related to poor health habits. We talked about last week these poor health habits: smoking, alcohol, drugs. Again, think of Joey. These poor health habits. Think of Arnold. He was an alcoholic. He drank excessively. He was verbally abusive to his wife. He had the trauma of being um, abandoned by his family, basically. Sexual behavior, pregnancy, early pre childhood pregnancy, um, medical diseases, all kinds of diseases. COPD, which is related to usually smoking, coronary heart disease, autoimmune diseases. Um, we'll see in a second that really connects with uh, females. Um, increased costs to the healthcare system, hospitalizations, uh, meds, all these things. Uh, life expectancy. It's not listed here, but the life expectancy, if you have high number of ACE scores, is 20 years less. You die younger by 20 years if you have a lot of ACE scores. We anticipate that when our health, when our perspective analysis of death rates is completed, it will be convincing that there's an increasing death rate. This is kind of premature. They did make that connection with the death rate. You'll see that uh, in the video. If you watch the video, it makes that quite uh, clear. Um, Women, we talked about this, women were 50% more likely to, to have experienced five or more categories of ACE scores. We really believe that, that here is a key in what is mainstream epidemiology appears to be a woman's natural proneness to ill-defined health problems like fibromyalgia. You'll see a ton of fibromyalgia out there in the clinics. Um, seems to be connected to ACE scores, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, obesity, irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, chronic non-malignant pain syndromes. In light of our findings, we now see that there's a medical, there are these as medical constructs, artifacts resulting from medical blindness to social realities, ignorance of the impact of the gender. So there's a connection. We need to be aware of that. We need to treat it, get resources for our patients um, as much as we can as OTs. Implications of the study. Trauma in childhood and adolescence is more common than recognized. Experiences of early years are lifelong. And we saw that just with the little marshmallow study. This is like implications to everything else beyond just um, 
attention and delayed gratification about things. Many of our most attractive public health problems are the result of compensatory behaviors, compensating, comp compensating for that childhood trauma. How do we compensate? By smoking, eating, substances, to provide immediate pain, uh, partial relief from the emotional problem caused by the traumatic childhood experiences. The chronic life stress of these developmental experiences is generally unrecognized and hence unappreciated as a second ideological mechanism. What are the implications of this as OTs? What, what do we care about this as OTs? Let's think about Joe at first, kind of what happened to Joe. Uh, remember Joe in the home situation, the first student saw him, didn't get very far with Joe. A lot of great ideas. He said he was ready to change, but he just could not sustain and follow through when she wasn't there. And she was just there once a week for just a few weeks. Uh, Joe spirals downward. A lot of people with A scores do. Goes to the hospital. Things change in the hospital. He has that structure in the hospital, has those routines and good habits in the hospital, uh, good rewards. He loves the socialization, positive reinforcement, traumatic change. He gets healthy. It's possible. You can see that people can get healthy. Um, and then what happened to Joe? It's kind of the sad part of the story. He goes back home again because he's independent. Within a month or so, he is a wreck again. He's all these bad behaviors just start all over again. The A scores, all that stuff just kind of overwhelms them. Where did the OT student, where could she have done, what could she have done differently? Some of it was in control, her control, some of it was not. Um, she could have advocated for him to get uh, more uh, psychological, mental health resources, counseling, psychologist. Um, she could have advocated, I'm not sure how possible it was, given our, our healthcare system, for him to get more supports and structure in the home. Um, he's shown that he has potential, he did show that he has potential, but he needs that structure, needs that routine. Um, a few months in the hospital was not going to overcome a lifetime of trauma, that impact on him. So if he had more structure and routine in the home as proven in the hospital, he may be able to sustain his uh, good habits and good behaviors and, and keep himself out of the hospital, which costs the system a ton of money. And somebody like Joe, he's probably in a nursing home at this point, if not passed away. Um, this is a few years back. Um, save the money long, a lot of money in the long run, but you know that's a whole kind of political, huge systemic issue. Um, so she could have advocated for more mental health services. She could have advocated for more uh, structure services in the home. That might have made a difference. So kind of what is in our purview, what is not. Uh, I would not administer the ACE to a client, even if you suspect that, you know, there's a lot of ACE stuff going on there. Uh, again, I would talk to or get them referred to counseling, mental health services. I've done that in the past. A lot of times I have clients, saw them for physical things, and a lot of these mental health stuff came up, and I really relied a lot on the case manager, the, the counselors, that sort of folks, those sort of folks. That's what we can do. We can refer. That's a big thing we can do. Um, getting all those resources, there's so lots of different resources, depending on what the issue is. For children, for families, providers on trauma exposure and some impact on treatment. Engaging in efforts to strengthen resilience, frontal lobe. And we talked about the frontal lobe um, and protective factors of children and families to protect it by and vulnerable to trauma. Self control, optimism, integrity, perseverance. This is what we can do as OTs. We, there's activities and therapies you can do. I mean, and, uh, Chris will teach you more about this at a lot of points um, that can help uh, strengthen these these behaviors. They can help deal, help manage and cope with all these childhood traumas and all that uh, kind of the fallout to that. Address parent and caregiver trauma and its impact on family systems, i.e. report. That's reporting trauma. We've got to report trauma. It's legally, we have to report trauma, stopping the cycle of more violence and trauma. Um, emphasizing family-centered, because it is a family issue. It's not just the child in isolation. They go back to that family. Emphasize continuity of care and collaboration across systems, communicating with everybody, uh, not just the MD, but the psychologist and all that. Um, advocate to access to community resources, such as quality health care, education, food pantries, uh, people are hungry, um, housing, shelters, substance abuse supports, all this sort of stuff. It's good as an OT to be really in tune to these resources and helping out uh, your patients the best you can. Okay, and lastly, uh, what I want to do here, uh, these questions. If you're watching this from home, uh, try to answer these questions. Ask me if you have questions about the questions. Also watch these videos. So, so see the second one, this one right here. It's very powerful. It's just uh, 15 minutes. It's a TED Talk. 
on this MD that's taking on ACE scores and the implication of ACE scores. Really good. This one is kind of review, summarize kind of what we just talked about. I'd watch them both, but definitely watch the second one. Um, very, very powerful.